Okay, viewers, I've got a special guest for you today. He's been working in the UK for a number of years, finally come back to his homeland. He specialises in asset investment planning and asset management and analytics. I'm sure he's got a few stories to tell, tell us about the asset management in the UK and Ireland and wherever else he's been. So I bring to you Mark Engelhardt. So Mark, um, can you tell us about your journey in the world of asset management, how it started, where you came from, what happened in the States and well, in the States, in the UK, and we'll go from there. Well, first of all, thanks uh, for the introduction and also thanks for having me. I suppose I should start uh, with my academic career. Yep. It started with a PhD in um, optimising infrastructure replacement here in Australia. And on completion of this work, I took up a research position at the University of Exeter on a very similar subject. And at the back end of this research pro project, we were asked by the water industry who were collaborating on the, the project to commercialise our research. So we did. So I spent the next 15 years founding and then building an asset investment planning company, um, consider it a software consultancy called Seams. Our clients uh, that we serviced were big infrastructure companies, which were typically under some level of regulation or stakeholders who wanted evidence behind what was the optimal level of investment across the asset life cycle. Although the company was predominantly serviced the UK water industry, we had clients in electricity, gas, road and rail, and our clients were located also in Netherlands, Denmark, US and Australia. I would add that our work wasn't just focused on the business plans and justifying levels of investment. We had also had a lot of success in rolling out business plans and meeting the service challenges of the clients on their long-term journeys. An example could be uh, a water company had an issue in terms of its pollution incidences. So how could we use data and analytics and optimization to identify how they were going to uh, improve that level of service and meet their targets? So the, really my asset management journey predominantly was with uh, Seams. And we took the company what was effectively 1.5 FTE in 2002 to 45 in 2017, at which point we sold the company to the large Dutch engineering company called Acadis. I stayed in the UK for another two years running that business. But when Acadis brought together a Seams with its other digital applications and created what was then known as Acadis Gen, uh, they moved me back to Australia to my uh, you know, happiness. So <laughs> since, since leaving Acadis, um, and this was in um, 2021, my role in the asset management field has been on the side of the owner, which was very interesting given my long history on the supply side. I guess the two key points that I've learned over that time in running a software company is that technology is only part of the challenge. It is, it is much easier demonstrating the value of technology as part of the sales and proof of concept than it is actually realizing the benefits on an ongoing basis. And I think this is why we find a lot of big infrastructure companies having lots of systems which aren't used. I think the, the other key point to learn is that data is better than what people expect. I think people have a, a pessimistic view on data uh, and often the issue isn't about the data itself, it's about the systems, which make it more difficult to get the value from the data, creating a, a you know, barrier to the any implementation. Cool. Well, uh, before we get into the detail, um, what was it like working in, in the UK and Europe and whatnot? Where are they at from your perspective with asset management? From 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 a UK perspective, I think the UK is ahead from an asset management perspective. I think the reasons why it's ahead, one is the regulation. 
I think the regulators moved earlier in terms of asset management. I also feel that the UK was greater, greater exposed to the global financial crisis of the late noughties. And therefore, the, the need to drive efficiencies through the asset life cycle were just stronger. And therefore, it moved faster. I think Europe is behind, the rest of Europe is behind the UK. Mm. But for, and I think largely that's less regulation, uh, much more municipality driven uh, enterprises, which are pushing the organizations for efficiency sales. And, and I'll take a case in point. I remember uh, we, we did a, a, a pilot piece of work in Europe and we identified an investment plan that could deliver 10% savings. The response to the client wasn't great. Let's, let's make use of the 10%. It was, oh, well, I'll put it in my drawer. And if, if the, my stakeholders say, I've got to reduce 10%, I know I have a solution. So I think the, it's that external drive, which is driving the rate of change in asset management. Yeah, I, I I remember um going back what twenty years uh, when the UK was into that. Mm. I found it was so financially uh, dominant from the regulators' perspective. Um, that was the answers they were looking for, not necessarily about the assets per se. It was how they were going to get the efficiencies out of the authorities. So um, is that true? Yeah, I, uh, there, that was my impression at the time. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of pressure around efficiency. Mm. Um, I, I would argue that yes, they got efficiencies. Did they get as much efficiencies as they could have had? I, I, mm. You know, the companies continue to pay dividends to their shareholders. Mm. Um, and um, you know, so one would argue, yes, there was a bit of there was more pressure, but. You know, it didn't stop them making return on an investment. Yeah. I think what was interesting about the systems that we provided was, you know, what that enabled the the uh, organization or the ND to do is go, well, if I do decide to put our investment here, what challenges can I expect to face by chasing that financial target? And so they were able to foresee the challenges they were going to have and then start addressing those within their financial mm. envelope. Yeah. So it's more a top down approach. I, I think, I think, I think that's the case. And I do actually think that that's where asset management will go simply because you're, 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 and I'll go into that probably later in the, in the piece, but you know, we in a perfect world we'd be able to afford everything, um, and as sustainability comes on board, etc. Mm. But the reality is, is that the funding envelope may not be able to change. Yeah. Therefore, there has to be a trade-off that, you know, we can't do everything, and I think that trade-off tends to happen at the aggregate level. Yeah. Are we going to achieve our service target? Are we going to increase risk? Are we going to be sustainability? Yeah, and I think the the key statement in that is the plan of least regrets. If we know we can't achieve everything for our stakeholders, then which one will we least regret when we get there? Yeah, yeah. I, I found it the top down approach uh, from my perspective. You know, after forty odd years um, in the business, um, I find it that egg needs to be broken that that top layer because we just don't get buy-in in 90 percent of the cases and so it's left to the underlings or the managers and the and the people on the ground to go in the direction they want to go i i i'd like that's to, in australia that's in australia I, I would like to um sort of challenge that back because i i it. don't i don't think that if you in doing a top-down approach, it depends on what the granularity of building blocks are. 
mm. to build up that top top level view. And I'll take an instance of a of you know three different companies, all under that top down pressure. One did nothing. Mm. Okay. One optimized it with eight thousand views, and another one did it with thirty thousand views of assets. Okay, and views I mean the building blocks about the options that we're exploring. Yeah. So all, although they all advocated a top-down approach, they actually solved it in different levels of detail, mm -hmm. and therefore they had more buy-in. The ones that had more detail had more buy-in than the ones that pretty you know run it from a viewpoint. Here's the plan. Let's throw it across the fence. Mm -hmm. They're uh, really yeah, so, look, I. I agree with you um, in reality because we've, in Australia, the journey's all been at the bottom end. Um, there's been some effort to sell, but in Victoria in particular, um, they've been dangling carrots rather than cracking the whip. So the top end say, yeah, okay, you, you just do what you need to do as far as making the regulator happy yes. without having or giving any direction at the bottom, to the bottom end. And on top of that, um, the big issue has always been the data, as you said. It's always been, you know, oh, we need to go out and collect data. Well, that's fine. How much do you need to collect is the big question. And it's always there on the table. To what level of detail do you need? The more, the better, but there's a cost involved. And that's the way they look at it, not the benefit. And it's very hard um, in a lot of organisations to get off that level once you've got a foundation. Yes. They don't accept the foundation. They want to get more and they want to get more and want to get more. So they're forever getting and not doing. And this is one of the issues. And and the systems don't help. I agree with you on that one, the way they're structured and, you know, how to report out of them and what sort of things you need to do to get the information out. Um, having said that, where you've got buy-in in the organisations I've dealt with, where you've got buy-in at the top end, it does run very smoothly and it can run very smoothly and it can be, you know, wonderful. I've, I've been dealing with one client at the moment and they got all the data for their buildings and all the rest of it. And um, you can do magical things with the data. You put your, your mind to it and you can do your analysis and everything else. So that's not the issue. And in that organisation, they actually perform very well, which is right. nice to say. <laughs> it's really nice to say. Enjoyed this video? Press the like button and subscribe. If you'd like to see more, please click on the Patreon link below and sign up.